Now let's take the first question of this set. Here it says that a triangle has side lengths of 10, 10 and 12 and a rectangle has a width of 4 and the area equal to the area of the triangle. We need to find the perimeter of this rectangle, right? So we can get the area of the triangle by using these three uh, sides and then we can compare the area of the rectangle uh, it with the area of the rectangle. Once we can compare the area with the rectangle, we'll be getting the length. We know the width, we'll be getting the length. Both are known, so we'll be getting the parameter. So this is the straightforward process of getting the answer. So let's start. So if I just draw the triangle here, then it say that, say these two lengths are 10 and this is 12, right? Obviously it's an isosceles triangle. So if I drop a perpendicular from here, it will be the median as well as the angle bisector, correct? So this length will be six, this is 10, this is, uh, this is 90 degrees. So obviously this will be eight. By Pythagoras theorem, applying Pythagoras theorem in this triangle, we can easily get it, right? So area of this triangle will be what? Half base into height, which comes out to be 48. So 48 is the area of the rectangle. So let us assume that the length of the rectangle is L. Then L into 4 is equal to 48. So the value of L will be 12. We have the length, we have the width. So the perimeter would be what? 2 times of L plus B, which comes out to be 2 into 12 plus 4 which is 32. So 32 is the answer for this question. It's a very easy question. Anybody can solve it. It will not take more than a minute. Now let's take the next question. Here it says that an equilateral triangle is formed by joining three vertices of a regular hexagon. So I have already drawn a regular hexagon here. And if you want to find an equilateral triangle, we have to take alternate vertices and join them. For example, if I take this vertices, then I should ignore this and should join this vertices. Similarly, ignore this and join this vertices and ignore this and join these two vertices. So this is how we'll be uh, creating an equilateral triangle. Now this question can easily be solved by using a simple craft method, wherein let us assume that this hexagon is a piece of paper, right? And we have drawn an equilateral triangle here. And if this is the center, this center would be symmetrically uh, center for both triangle as well as the hexagon. And here we can see that if I fold this much portion, keeping this as the crease, the side, the side of the uh, equilateral as the crease, then definitely it will cover this much portion of the equilateral triangle. Similarly, if I fold this, then this will cover this much portion. And if I fold this, then this will cover the rest of the portion. So what we observe here is that the outer portion area is equal to area of the equilateral triangle, right? So if the area of equilateral triangle is A, the outer portion, outer area is also equal to A. And combining both equilateral and outer portion, 2A would be the area of the complete hexagon. So clearly, if you want to find the ratio of the area of equilateral triangle, then area is A. Compared to hexagon, it will be 2 of A. So the ratio is 1 is to 2, option B. Again, just by simple observation, we can solve it. Very, very easy question. Must attempt question for this set. Now, let's take the third question. Here it says that the median AB and B of a triangle with the vertices, the coordinates are given and they are perpendicular if. So we have to apply the uh, basic logic of uh, coordinate geometry here that if, uh, if I have two straight lines, right? And if I know that the slope of the first straight line is m1 and the slope of the second straight line is m2, then these will be perpendicular only if m1 into m2 is equal to minus of 1, right? This is a standard formula for coordinate geometry. Anyone who has gone through the basics of coordinate geometry must be understanding it, right? Now, let us uh, draw the scenario here. So, say this is point B because this is the origin. Then this is the point A whose vertices is 0B and say this is point C whose vertices is A0. Now, of course, this is a right angle triangle. As we can see, the median AD, if I want to draw, then D is the midpoint. These two sides, uh, these two uh, lines will be equal. Since D is the midpoint on X axis, obviously the coordinates of A would be what? A by two and zero, right? How do we find the midpoint? We have to add these two and divide by two. So I'll be getting A by two. And similarly, zero plus zero divided by two, again, I'll be getting zero. So this is how we find the midpoint. Similarly, if I want to find the median BE, so these two lengths will be equal. Again, this point would be the midpoint of these two coordinates. So again, what we'll be doing is that 0 plus A by 2, we will be getting A by 2 and B plus 0, this is 0, right? Let me just write it clearly so that it will not get confused. Here it is A0. So B plus 0 by 2, it will be B by 2. So we have found the coordinates. Now, once we know the coordinates, for example, if we know the coordinates x1, y1, and the other coordinate is x2, y2, then the slope, to find the slope, we use the formula y2 minus y1 
divided by x2 minus x1 correct so let us find the coordinate uh, sorry the slope for the length ad let us assume it to be m1 so m1 would be equal to how much say this is x2 y2 and this is x1 y1 so obviously y2 minus p so it will be minus b divided by x2 minus this so it will be a by 2 so this is nothing but minus 2 by a this is m1 similarly let us assume that the slope for the line be is m2 here let, let us assume that this is x2 y2 and this is x1 y1 so clearly x2 y2 uh, putting this uh, putting in this formula will be getting it as b by 2 over a by 2 or simply b by a now for these two lines to be perpendicular definitely the product of these two should be equal to minus 1 as the uh, as the formula says from the content geometry so we have to take the product so minus 2 b by a into b by a should be equal to minus 1 so clearly we can see that 2 b square should be equal to a square or we can say that a is nothing but under root 2b since we are taking square root both the side so it would be either plus or minus so it could be a can be equal to root of 2b or it could be minus root of 2b which we can clearly see in option number c so option c becomes the right answer it's an easy question for those people who are comfortable with coordinate geometry and who have no idea of coordinate geometry definitely you should read this question now the fourth question say that a boy of 500 centimeters start walking along a straight line away from the base of a lamp post at a speed of 1.4 meter per second and if the lamp is 42 meter above the ground we have to find the length in centimeter of the boy's shadow after 40 seconds so this scenario is drawn here this is the lamp post ab is the lamp post everything has been converted into centimeters so 42 meter has been converted into centimeter so it will be 4200 centimeter boy was here and it is moving at a speed of 1.4 meter per second right so in 40 seconds he would have moved 1.4 into 40 which comes out to be 56 meters now again we'll convert it into centimeters so it will be 5600 centimeters so after 40 seconds the boy would be at this place right and his height is 100 centimeters so obviously here is the lamp so this lamp will cast a shadow which will be of this length right so we have assumed it to be x now clearly this is a similar triangle right this uh, right angle triangle is similar to the larger triangle abe or what i mean to say that dce this triangle is similar to triangle abe correct so straight away we can just compare the uh, ratio of their corresponding side so here if i take x over 100 that is x over 100 it should be equal to this entire length which is 5600 plus of x divided by 4200 right so we can just get, uh, get rid of 100 or two zeros from here we can write it as 42x is equal to 5600 plus of x or 41x is equal to 5600 centimeter so x is equal to 5600 divided by 41 centimeter on calculation i'll be getting it as 136.6 approximately right this much centimeter we have to find this length in centimeter so option b becomes the right answer again a very easy question anyone who has just gone through the basic elementary height and distance questions in the class 9th or class 10 can easily solve this now let's take the fifth question here it says that in a triangle abc the point d divides the side ac so that this is the ratio right i have already drawn the triangle here you can see that abc is a triangle and d is the mid, d is the point such that this is in the ratio 1 is to 2 further is the midpoint of bd so bd is drawn is the midpoint of bd so these two lengths are equal right and ae is extended till f where f meets uh, to the line bc it says that the area of the triangle is 360 so we have to find the area of the triangle ebf correct we have to find this area let me assume it to be x now here we'll be applying the logic that if the vertex is same and the base is in the straight line then the two triangles if they are divided by the base in the ratio say uh, 1 is to or say maybe a is to b then their area is also in the ratio a is to b if the vertex is common and the base is in a straight line and any line which divides the base in the ratio a is to b then the area is also in the ratio a is to b this is the simple concept which will be using it so let's extend this logic here so what we can do here is that uh, the complete triangle area is given to us 360 degree now observe that d is the common vertex for the triangle a b d 
and for the triangle B D C, right? And their base are in the ratio one is to two. And completely, if I add the area of these two triangles, this is nothing but area of the triangle A B C, which is nothing but 360 degree. So their base are in the ratio one is to two. So obviously their area should also be in the ratio one is to two. The total area is 360. So one part will be uh, say 120, and the other part will be uh, it will be 240. So we can say that this triangle A B D the area is 120. Further, in this triangle itself, AE is acting as a median. Why so? Because it is dividing the base BD in the ratio 1 is to 1 or in equal ratio. So median divides the area into two equal halves. The complete triangle ABD, the area is 120. So it will be divided into equal halves. So it will be 60 and this area is also 60. Right? Now further, what we can do is that we can join EC. Once we join EC, now we can focus on triangle AEC. In this triangle, we can see that E is the common vertex and the base is divided in the ratio 1 is to 2. So the area will also be in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if this is 60, then this will be twice of 60, which is 120. Right? Now this is the only area left. The total area is 360. So if I count, then this is 120 plus 120 will make it 240 plus of x. So this should be 120 minus x so that if I add all these, for all these five numbers, it should add up to 360, right? Now we can start with any of the triangle. Let us focus on the triangle ABF. In this triangle, we can say that B is the common vertex and it is divided, BE is dividing the area into 60 and X. This should be in the same ratio as their base is being divided by E. So it will be AE and AF, or we can say that AE and EF that should be in the ratio of the corresponding area. So it should be 60 over X. Say this is equation number one. Similarly, if I focus on the triangle ACF, so ACF is divided into two area that is AEC and the other one is CEF, correct? So the area of AEC is 60 plus 120, which is 180, right? And this area is nothing but 120 minus of X. So we can say that the base that is AE and EF, AE and EF, they should be in this ratio that is 180 over 120 minus X. This is my equation number two. Both are uh, the ratio of AE over EF. So we can just compare these two values. So I'm just making space here. So this will be 60 over X should be equal to 180 divided by 120 minus of X. This will go by three times. Or we can say that 3 of x is equal to 120 minus of x or 4 of x is equal to 120. So the value of x is equal to 30 and that is our answer. A medium level of difficulty question I would say but yes the concept applied is very very elementary. Now the sixth question says that the figure given below shows the triangle ABC that circumscribes the circle. So circle is an in circle for this triangle and the radius of the circle is 3. D is the point of the contact. D is known. This is 3. Obviously this will be 90 degree. This 2 will be 90 degree. And uh, we have been given that the length of AB is 4 and the length of DB is 6. So overall the length of AB would be equal to 4 plus 6 that is 10. Right. Now we have to find the ratio of AC over BC that the uh, ratio of the other two sides of the triangle. Now here we can see that all the, these three lines are tangent to the circle. And we know that if there is a circle and if there is a point outside the circle if I draw tangent then both these lengths are equal or we can say that the length of the tangent is equal if our two tangents are drawn from a point outside the circle. So this is the point of contact. This is the point of contact. This is the point of contact. So here we can see that from A two tangents are drawn. One is this much. Let it be E and F. One is AE and the other is AD. Both will be equal from this logic. So this two will be equal to four. Similarly from B two tangents have been drawn BF and BD. Both are equal to 6. So this will be equal to 6, right? Further, from C, two tangents are drawn CE and CF. So both are equal. Let us assume it to be X, correct? Now we need to find the ratio of AC over uh, uh, BC. So it will be AC is X plus 4 and BC is X plus 6. So somehow we have to get the value of X, right? Now, what are the things which come to our mind when we talk about the in circle? We have a famous formula for finding the area of the triangle. So area of the triangle ABC here will be equal to R into S where R is the uh, radius of the circle and S is the semi perimeter. The other formula when all the three sides are known 
to find the area of the triangle we know that we can apply hero's formula correct and that hero's formula is nothing but s into s minus a s minus b and s minus c where a b c are the sides of the triangle both are the area of the same triangle so we can compare them right so r is 3 into s s we have to find so let us find the s so the two sides are this and the third side is 10 so it will be x plus 4 plus x plus 6 plus x plus 10 so it comes out to be 2x plus 20 divided by 2 which comes out to be x plus 10 correct so this is the same parameter now let me write it here r into s applying the heroes formula here so s is x plus 10 and s minus a so let us assume that a is x plus 4 b is the second line x plus 6 and c is the length 10 then x plus 10 minus x plus 4 will give me 6 x plus 10 minus x plus 6 will give me 4 and x plus 10 minus 10 will give me x correct let us square both the sides so we'll be getting 3 into or in fact 3 will become 9 x plus 10 whole square here it will be x plus 10 into 24x this will go out right so 9 of x plus of 90 is equal to 24x or we can say that 15x is equal to 90 or the value of x is 6 so we have identified the value of x so the ratio ab sorry ac over bc that should be equal to ac is uh, x plus 4 so it will be 6 plus 4 and here it will be 6 plus 6 which is nothing but 10 by 12 or 5 is to 6 so 5 is to 6 is the answer for this question now let's take the seventh question here it says that in triangle abc point is on uh, ab with ae is equal to 1 so everything is depicted here abc is a triangle is a point so that a is 1 and eb is 2 eb is 2 point d is on ac such that d is parallel to bc so de is parallel to bc and similarly point f is on bc so that ef is parallel to ac so ef is parallel to ac correct now we need to find the area of uh, the quadrilateral cdef to the area of triangle abc now here clearly we can see that if these two lines are parallel then this angle and this angle will be equal right Similarly, AC and EF are parallel, so this angle will also equal to this angle. These are all uh, corresponding angles. If two parallel lines are drawn, and if I draw a transversal, then these two angles are equal. I am applying the same logic here. So, thereby I can see that the triangle ADE, triangle ADE, this is similar to triangle ACB, right? or abc we can say right the corresponding sides are in the ratio 1 is to 3 so if the corresponding side of this triangle is 1 then the corresponding side of this triangle is 3 so their corresponding area compared that will be in the ratio 1 is to 9 that means if the area of the triangle abc is 9 then the area of ade is 1 correct so let us assume that the area is a so the total area would be 9 of a correct and the same logic we can say that triangle ade this is also similar to triangle efb and the corresponding sides here are 1 is to 2 so thereby their corresponding area will be in the ratio of 1 is to 4 so if the area of this is a then the area of this would be 4 of a the total area is 9 of a correct this is a this is 4 of a together they make it 5 of a so obviously this should be 4 of a so that sum of all these three area will make up the total area abc so we know that the area of cdef is 4 of a and the area of abc is 9 of a so the corresponding ratio is 5 is to 9 which is option number a easy question it's not a very difficult question just a simple application of similar triangle will get to the answer now let's take the eighth question here it says that in the figure given below angle bac is equal to angle dbc so angle bac this angle is equal to dbc this angle right and ac is to bc is 3 is to 2 we have been given that the area of the triangle abd this is 20 we have to find the area of the other triangle that is the x right now this information itself is hinting us to apply a similar triangle right why so 
because if the two angles are equal then the triangle becomes similar so one of the pair of the angle equal is given to us we have to find the other angle most probably in most of the cases it is the common angle for example if i consider angle c and if i take triangle a b c and again i take a triangle b d c then we can say that angle a is equal to angle b right and angle c is common so both these triangles are similar triangles now if we take the corresponding side then if i take the side ac then the here corresponding side will be bc ac is to bc the ratio is already given so the side ratio is 3 is to 2 so the ratio of area would be square of it which is 9 is to 4 correct so the area of bdc that is x this is 4 and the total area is 9 so let me assume that this area is nothing but equal to say 4 of x for example right then the total area of abc this will be 9 of x if this is 4 of x then this is 9 of x definitely the area of triangle abc is divided into two parts one is 20 and one is 4 of x so we can say that 4 of x plus 20 should be equal to the total area that is 9 of x so clearly 5 of x is equal to 20 or the value of x is equal to 4 so we can substitute here so the answer comes out to be 16 and that is the answer now let's take the ninth question here it says that abc are the sides of the triangle and this is the relation given so we have to find that uh, what kind of triangle it is so that this relation is valid for such question what we do is that we take an example and try to match with the equation for example let us assume that the triangle is equilateral in that case both the value of a b and c will be equal or we can say that all will be equal to a now if this is so then this equation must satisfy and if the equation is satisfying then we can say that our assumption is true and we'll be marking a as the answer right so let us assume that b and c is also equal to a then this much portion the lhs will become three times of a square and in the rhs this will become a square this will become a square this will become a square that is also 3a square so straight away we can say that lhs and rhs are matching so our assumption is correct so option a is the right answer very very easy question to solve this question in competitive exam you don't have to go with the longer way of proving it you just take some instances try to fit it in the equation if your assumption is correct the equation will respond to you now let's take the last question of this set here it says that a right angle triangle pqr is right angle at q so let us first of all draw it so this is something like this say this is p this is q and this is r this is at 90 degree now with pr as 70 so this value will just retain it the angle bisector of pqr the angle bisector of pqr that means this this is the angle bisector so obviously this length in fact it is looking like an altitude so let me take that the angle bisector is something like this sorry something like this say so this is 45 degree this too would be 45 degree further uh, it intersects at x so this point is x and the median is drawn from vertex q intersect pr at y and the median is something like this so this is y now if x y this length is 5 then we have to find the area of the triangle now since this is a right angle triangle the best idea would be to get the value of qr and the value of pq and apply half base into height right this triangle itself is 90 degree so let us start with what should we do yes one one length is given to us that is 70 so that will help us now since this is median right this is median so we can say that py is equal to yr and both will be equal to 35 so this much length is 35 this length is 5 so obviously px will be equal to 30 and yr or ry is 35 right now if we look at this that this is 45 degree can we walk something out of it no it is given that this is an angle bisector now if this is an angle bisector then we can say that the ratio of px over the ratio of rx that should be the ratio of pq over qr this is the relation we get from angle bisector theorem right now px is nothing but 30 and rx will be 35 plus 5 that is 40 they are in the ratio 3 is to 4 
So now we have got everything. If I assume P X, P Q to be say 3 of A and Q R to be 4 of A, the hypotenuse is given to us as 17. Then we can apply Pythagoras theorem here. In fact, it looks like 30, uh, 3, 4, 5 triangles. So obviously, uh, if this is 17, which it should be 5 of A, then 5A is 17. So the value of A would be 14. So this value would be 42. And this value would be uh, 56. So we have identified the, uh, the altitude. We have identified the base. So the area would be half base into height. So on calculation, I'll be getting it as this is 56 into 42 divided by 2, which is equal to 1176. So that should be the answer.